In the depths of the vast ocean, a chilling enigma lies shrouded in darkness, a perplexing puzzle that has confounded investigators and haunted the minds of the families involved. It was a day like any other when Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 vanished from the radar, leaving a void of uncertainty that defies explanation. As the world stood aghast, questions echoed through the corridors of the Malaysian Airlines offices, begging for answers that seemed forever elusive. What truly transpired on that fateful journey? Was it an act of sabotage or a sinister force from the unknown? Step into the shadows as we unravel the veil of secrecy surrounding the mysterious disappearance, the eerie whispers, unspoken truths, and perplexing evidence that paint a haunting portrait of this enigmatic vanishing. The MH370 disappearance occurred on March 8, 2014, when a Malaysia Airlines passenger aircraft disappeared en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. The disappearance of the Boeing 777, which was carrying 227 passengers and 12 crew members, prompted a search operation that spanned from the Indian Ocean west of Australia to Central Asia. MH370's mysterious disappearance has made it one of history's most notorious missing aircraft. Flight 370 departed at 12.41 a.m. local time and achieved its cruising altitude of 35,000 feet at 1 a.m. The Aircraft Communication Addressing and Reporting System, or ACARS, which transmitted information regarding the aircraft's performance, sent its final transmission at 1.07 a.m. and was manually turned off. The last voice communication from the crew occurred at 1.19 a.m., and the aircraft's transponder, which communicated with air traffic control, was turned off at 1.21 a.m., just before the aircraft entered Vietnamese airspace over the South China Sea. At 1.30 a.m., Malaysian military and civilian radar began tracking the aircraft as it reversed its course and flew southwest over the Malay Peninsula, and then north over the Strait of Malacca. Malaysian military radar lost contact with the aircraft over the Andaman Sea at 2.22 a.m. At 8.11 a.m., an IMASAT satellite in geostationary orbit above the Indian Ocean detected Flight 370 for the last time. Initial inquiries focused primarily on the South China Sea. Search efforts shifted to the Strait of Malacca and the Andaman Sea after it was determined that Flight 370 had turned west shortly after the transponder was turned off. The Imersat contact was disclosed on March 15th, a week after the aircraft disappeared. Imersat is a British satellite communications corporation that provides mobile services worldwide. It offers international telephone and data services via portable or mobile terminals that communicate with ground stations via 14 geostationary communications satellites. Imersat's network provides communication services to various governments, aid organizations, media outlets, and businesses, mainly maritime, airline, and mining industries, that must communicate in remote regions or where a dependable terrestrial network is unavailable. Analysis of the signal was unable to pinpoint the aircraft's precise location. Still, it was determined that it could have been anywhere within two arcs, one extending from Java to the Indian Ocean southwest of Australia, and the other from Vietnam to Turkmenistan across Asia. The search area was expanded to include the Indian Ocean, south of Australia and Southeast Asia, Western China, the Indian subcontinent, and Central Asia on the Northern Arc. On March 24th, Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak announced that Imersat and the UK Air Accidents Investigation Branch had determined, based on an analysis of the final signals, that the flight had crashed 1,500 miles southwest of Australia in a remote region of the Indian Ocean. Therefore, it was highly improbable that anyone on board survived. The secluded location of the accident site complicated the search for wreckage. Beginning on April 6th, an Australian ship detected multiple acoustic signals that may have originated from the flight recorder or black box of the Boeing 777 
approximately 1,200 miles northwest of Perth, Western Australia. The Air Accidents Investigation Branch's additional analysis of the IMASAT data revealed a partial signal from the plane at 8.19 a.m., consistent with the location of the last acoustic pings detected on April 8. If the signals originated from Flight 370, the flight recorder's battery was likely dying. Using an autonomous submarine, additional searches were conducted. However, the signals were dispersed over a large area, the submarine did not find any detritus, and investigations revealed that a defective cable in the acoustic apparatus may have caused the pings. The first piece of debris wasn't discovered until July 29, 2015, when the right-wing flaperon was found on a shore on the French island of Réunion, approximately 2,300 miles west of the area of the Indian Ocean, being searched by Australian authorities. Over the course of the following year and a half, 26 other fragments of detritus were discovered on the coasts of Tanzania, Mozambique, South Africa, Madagascar, and Mauritius. Three of the 27 fragments were positively identified as originating from Flight 370, while 17 likely originated from the aircraft. Two sections of the cabin interior were recovered, indicating that the aircraft had split up, but it is unknown whether this occurred in flight or upon impact with the water. The study of the Réunion wing flaperon and a fragment of the right wing flap discovered in Tanzania revealed that the aircraft had not made a controlled descent. Some researchers believe that Flight 370 could have made a vertical impact with the water, a possibility that one modeling study conducted before the discovery of the flaperon suggests could explain the lack of physical evidence of the crashed plane. In January 2017, the governments of Malaysia, Australia, and China called off the search for Flight 370. Ocean Infinity, an American corporation, was granted permission by the Malaysian government to continue searching until May 2017, when the Malaysian Transport Ministry announced that the search would be called off. The Malaysian government issued its final report on the disappearance of Flight 370 in July 2018. Mechanical failure was considered highly improbable, and the change in flight path likely resulted from manual inputs, but the investigators could not establish why Flight 370 vanished. When anything, be it a murder, assassination, large-scale accident, or in this case a mysterious disappearance happens, hundreds of theories come out of the woodwork, some very probable, some highly improbable, and of course the obligatory conspiracy theories. This video will give you a rundown of all three and what we at Bad Things think happened to MH370. Probable. Terrorists hijacked the plane. The pilots may have been forced by terrorists on board to cut off communications and alter the plane's course before crashing and disappearing. Alternatively, the hijacker could have been an expert pilot and piloted the aircraft. Authorities have not ruled out terrorism as a cause, and no groups have claimed responsibility for the tragedy. Occasionally, terrorist organizations maintain silence about their activities, particularly when they fail. When Pan Am Flight 103 was devastated by a bomb over Lockerbie, Scotland, it took three years for investigators to issue arrest warrants for two Libyan men. In fact, it wasn't until 2003 that Muammar Gaddafi confessed Libya's involvement in the attack. Highly improbable. Terrorists stole the plane for a later attack. One potential reason why a terrorist organization would not claim responsibility for a hijacking is that they intend to use the aircraft in the future. The aircraft's possible northern route took it over remote areas where a Boeing 777 could land, but landing a plane of that size without a usable runway is challenging, especially if the plane needs to take off again and be used in an attack. It's very difficult to steal a 777 with Malaysian markings, an expert said. It needs a 10,000-foot runway, so where are you going to put it down? Not to mention the raised suspicions if a Malaysian airliner being looked for by multiple governments appeared where it shouldn't. 
If the plane flew north, improving its chances of landing, it would have had to pass over populated areas, increasing the likelihood of its detection. A remote but not impossible method of evading detection would be to shadow another aircraft by flying near enough to appear as a single object. Former Italian Air Force pilot and journalist David Senziotti stated, It would be quite a difficult maneuver. Let's not forget the entire maneuver, if performed, was performed at night with no help from ground radars, estimating reciprocal speeds, distances, altitudes, based only on navigational lights is difficult, maybe too much. The concept of hijacking an airplane for use in a future attack predates September 11, 2001. In 1959, personnel of the Brazilian Air Force commandeered a propeller aircraft carrying 44 passengers and landed it in southwest Brazil. They intended to use the plane to attack Rio de Janeiro, but the plot failed and the hostages survived the ordeal. Auburn Calloway, a 1994 Federal Express employee, attempted to hijack a FedEx cargo aircraft to fly it into the company's headquarters. The crew was able to subdue Calloway, despite suffering severe injuries. Highly improbable and tinfoil hat-worthy. Aliens hijacked the plane. There was a theory that Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 was taken over by aliens, after which it vanished. A man claimed he received alien-related messages in Morse code from the location where the aircraft was last detected, giving rise to the theories. Conspiracy Theory Freescale Twenty personnel of the American technology company Freescale Semiconductor were aboard flight MH370. Freescale manufactures powerful microchips for various industries, including the defense sector. Twelve employees were Malaysian, while eight were Chinese. In one conspiracy theory, the United States government dreaded their specifications on the chips might fall into the clutches of the Chinese government. The aircraft was consequently commandeered and flown to the U.S. base on Diego Garcia. In an alternate version of the theory, the Chinese seized control of the flight to interrogate the Freescale employees to determine the scope of U.S. surveillance. There was a further hypothesis that Iranians boarded as passengers with stolen passports to gain access to Freescale's technical know-how. And still, another theory involves patent rights and the Illuminati. According to Freescale, the employees on board were technical personnel reviewing the company's semiconductor facilities. There is a patent frequently cited by conspiracy theorists. Instead of being a military nature, this patent describes a method for maximizing the number of circuits on a piece of semiconducting material, and none of the four individuals named as the patent holder were on the aircraft. With all these theories being postulated, none mentions the most crucial person on flight MH370, the pilot. And with that, we get to the bad things theory on what most likely happened to MH370. Did the pilot, Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah, crash MH370 in an attempt to end his life? The aircraft's cockpit was equipped with anti-hijacker doors that prevented locked-out crew or passengers from interfering with an ending of a life or a hijacking situation. This incident was comparable to Silk Air Flight 185 in 1997, Egypt Air Flight 990 in 1999, Lamb Mozambique Airlines Flight 470 in 2013, and German Wings Flight 9525 in 2015. All of these flights and catastrophes resulted from pilots committing life-ending acts. Shortly after the disappearance of Flight 370, media reports disclosed that Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah's wife and three children had moved out of his home the day before the disappearance. A fellow pilot and longtime associate of Captain Shah said that he was terribly upset over the disintegration of his marriage. Captain Shah's wife and daughter said he was distracted and withdrawn in the weeks before the aircraft's disappearance, and refused pleas to attend some marriage counseling sessions. Faisal Kanum Mustafa Khan, Shah's wife, had told investigators that he stopped speaking to her in the weeks before the fateful flight on March 8th, and spent time alone in his room where he had built a flight simulator, according to a newspaper report. He just retreated into a shell 
I found him distant and difficult to understand, she would say. Police also investigated reports that Shah received a two-minute phone call from an unidentified woman using a mobile phone number obtained using a false identity before the flight's departure. An acquaintance claimed that Captain Shah was seeing another woman, and his relationship with her was also tricky. Could this be the same woman who made the call? In addition, Captain Shah supported and was a friend of Malaysian opposition politician Anwar Ibrahim, who was sentenced to prison on March the 7th after an earlier acquittal on sodomy charges was reversed in a politically motivated move. An author has suggested that it may have been enough to trigger the pilot into some sort of hostage situation. After conducting 170 interviews with those who knew Captain Shah, investigators discovered that he had made no social or professional plans after March 8th, when Flight 370 vanished. These results of the police investigation into the pilots and their lack of social plans and flight simulator training were shared with members of the investigation team but have not yet been made public. However, according to news reports published on July 23, 2014, the police considered the potential culpability of everyone on board the aircraft. They named the captain as the primary suspect if human interference with the plane is proved to have been involved. The Federal Bureau of Investigation reconstructed expunged data from Captain Shah's personal flight simulator, but a Malaysian government spokesman stated that nothing sinister was discovered. However, the Sunday Times later reported that among deleted flight paths conducted on the flight simulator, investigators found a flight path into the Southern Ocean where a simulated landing was performed on a small runway island. In 2016, a leaked American document stated that the FBI's analysis of the computer's hard drive revealed a route on the pilot's personal flight simulator that closely matched the projected flight over the Indian Ocean. The ATSB verified this, but emphasized that it did not prove the pilot's involvement. Shah's family ardently refuted that he wanted to end his life. Former British Airways senior Boeing 777 pilot Simon Hardy told BBC News that the plane's route was probably very accurate flying rather than just a coincidence, and that the aircraft turned to the northwest over the Malacca Strait provided a clear view of the captain's home island of Penang. Someone was looking at Penang. Someone was taking a long, emotional look at Penang. The captain was from the island of Penang. It does a strange hook. In order to look at Penang, you have to turn left or right, get alongside it, and then execute a long turn. If you look at the output from Malaysian 370, there were actually three turns, not one. Someone was looking at Penang. Did Captain Shah end his life and that of 292 passengers and crew on purpose? As we have seen, doing this with an aircraft is not an isolated incident. Considering that equipment was disabled during the flight, no maydays were sent out by the crew, and Shah was experiencing personal problems, our opinion on the MH370 is that the pilot was responsible for the crash. Have you got a theory you would like to share with us? Leave us a comment below on what you think happened to MH370. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.